Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel Maxco Tech. This is the second part of the video on tag management and versionings. Whereas in the first part, we looked at the falling points and discussed the possible resolutions on how you can manage and efficiently operate your Airflow environment where you have more than hundreds of tags. The link of the first part is right at the top corner. If you missed it, do have a look at that. Whereas in this video, we are going to look at how you can manage package dependencies within your Airflow environment and also how to avoid package dependency conflicts across multiple tags. So let's get started. Given a scenario where you have a scheduler and it needs to run two DAGs, and each of the DAG has two tasks, each using HTTP operator, Python operator, MySQL operator, or whichever operator it needs to use. Now each of the tasks may require different Python packages. As an example, they could have their own requirement files where you have pandas and numpies. What possible problems that you will face in this scenario? First thing you will keep in mind that the Airflow workers also use the same Airflow image which is used in the scheduler and the worker. No matter which executor are you using, even if you are using a local executor, Celery executor or even a Kubernetes executor. So that means all of the DAGs running within your Airflow environment needs to have the required packages installed in the Airflow image. In this way, imagine if you have more than hundreds of tags, it is really hard to track which package is being used by which tag. And it becomes a pain when you have to clean up the packages or even upgrade the packages while tag removal or upgrade. One could also end up creating a virtual environment for each of the tag. But ramping up and ramping down these virtual environments while tag starts and stops is a process on its own which itself slows down the entire workflow and also requires you to have an extra effort on automating this entire process. And as a result, it needs extra work to maintain virtual environments. Before coming to the solution, one should have a clear understanding about what is workflow execution and workflow management. Workflow execution is a space where the business logic is being performed and that happens within the DAG's task. Whereas workflow management is the space where scheduling of the DAGs, tasks, managing the task dependencies, managing XCOMs between the tasks, managing connections, variables, and etc. Now the point is that these two spaces does not necessarily have to share the same virtual environment. Yes, as we discussed before, each DAG can have its own virtual environment, but the question is where to keep these virtual environments. It's definitely not a good idea to keep in the same Airflow image, so we need a way to provide an isolation between these two layers. And the idea on how we could do this is build a Docker container that performs the business logic and install all of the dependencies required for that specific business logic within this container and let Airflow run these containers. But the question is how? By using Docker operator or Kubernetes pod operator. With these operators, you can bake in your Python code within their specific dependencies and let Airflow run these. In that way, you don't need to manage the Python dependencies in Airflow and you won't encounter any disaster scenarios where two DAGs have conflicting dependencies because each task is running on their own private container. Now let us have a closer look at both of these operators. Docker operator. This operator lets you run Docker containers within the same Airflow worker node. When a scheduler spins up a DAG, in this way, whenever you define a Docker container task in your DAG, it spins up a separate Docker container within the same worker node. In an example below, you can see that while defining the Docker operator, we are referring to the image, and we can also call the same image with different commands to perform different logics as an example. So the first task is fetching the data and the second task is loading the data. And the both can be part of the same Docker image. Now here the blue colored is the workflow management, as you can see, which is responsible for spinning up the tags, taking care of the task dependencies, etc. And this light orange color is representing the workflow execution. On the other hand, we have Kubernetes pod operator, which lets you run the Docker container on a dedicated worker node in a Kubernetes cluster. As an example, a scheduler spins up a DAG, which has two tasks in it, and each of the tasks uses Kubernetes pod operator. So what happens after that is that Kubernetes pod operator spins up another worker node with, with the following commands as which image it needs, what arguments it needs, etc. And all of these are running on a dedicated worker node also known as pods in Kubernetes. In this case, pod B is the watcher pod, whereas the pod E is the worker pod. 
The reason it's called watcher pod is because it monitors the worker pod. As soon as it finishes, it updates the status of that worker pod to Airflow and also fetches the logs from the worker pod and stores it in the Airflow logs directory. Workflow management and workflow execution in this case would look something like this. Looking at the pros and cons of each of these operators, first of all, the common advantages that both of these operators share are as follows. Using these operators, we are avoiding a scenario where we have to overpopulate the Airflow image with extra packages to run the DAGs. And that is because the task packages are installed in the container image. We can reuse the same image with different arcs, as I showed before. In this way, one business logic can be broken down into small steps and can be executed as part of different tasks within the same DAG. In this way, you can easily debug a DAG if it breaks in between by looking at the logs of only that faulty task and rerun it. One of my personal favorite advantage that these operators provide is that you are not relying on Python anymore. So you can use any of your favorite programming language to perform the business logic and let Airflow run it. Last but not least, these operators also lets you define custom memory allocations for each of your tasks. Speaking about the drawbacks, since we know that Docker operator runs the containers within the same Airflow worker, so we are resource limited and are only bound to the limit of that worker's resources. Whereas this is not the case in Kubernetes pod operator because the containers are running on their independent nodes, also known as pods. Speaking about the drawbacks of Kubernetes pod operator, which in my opinion are really minor, are that of course you definitely need a Kubernetes knowledge. With that, I mean like you have to have a cluster pre-installed and up and running before you can use Kubernetes executors and on top Kubernetes pod operators. There is a very teeny little delay and that is because each task requires two nodes. That is how we are managing and keeping isolation between the DAG package dependencies and Airflow dependencies. But that does not mean that we do not use other operators at all. We do. We use other operators which does not require any additional packages which are not already installed in Airflow image. As an example, Python operator, HTT operator to name a few. On the other hand, it is worth keeping an extra Python package installed within the Airflow image if that package is used by more than 60 or 70% of your DAGs. And with that, we are going to wrap up this video. If you have any questions, please mention them down in the comments below. If you have any suggestions, please do share them. Last but not least, if you like this video, leave a thumbs up and do share it with others. And if you are new to this channel, please do subscribe. This is going to keep us motivated to bring such useful stuff to you guys in the future. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much.